Are you getting a sore neck on the bike? If so, it might be being caused by one of these things. Most handlebars that come on off the peg bikes are too wide. If you consider most men that I measure are measured between 39 and 41 centimeters, most, most women measure between 32 and 38. That renders a 40, which is what you'll get on a woman's bike, too wide, and a 42, which is what you'll get on most average size men's bikes, too wide. And what this typically results in when the handlebar is too wide is this rolling of the wrist. So if you consider this, no one walks around like that. So why would we want our hands like this? So what we commonly see is riders rotating the wrist as a means of aligning the wrist with the shoulder. Okay? It also results in typically difficulty reaching the brake levers and, uh, and loss of control. But what that means is it resonates up through the neck and the shoulders and an inability to look ahead is the result. The excessively wide handlebar thing is very common in gravel circles. This is a particularly moronic one with zero flair. I thank you bike industry for that. But we're starting to see now that there's, there's quite a lot of flair in some of these wider bars which actually can, can mitigate some, some hand problems because it places the hand in a slightly more natural position. Because the hand and is kind of linked to the neck and shoulders. Uh, if you've got a lot of weight on the front of the bike or you've got a poor interaction at this point, it results in that, that it, those issues resonating up through the chain. Cue neck and shoulder problems. I can't do reach and excessive saddle height. I mean, I can't, it's, I don't know how people, I don't know how people do it. I really don't. If your reach is too long, it'll also give you neck and shoulder issues. But simply what happens is that if the handlebar is too far away from you, your shoulders rise up a little bit like this, the neck disappears a little bit like a turtle, and cue an inability to look ahead and typically resulting in lots of, lots of tension in the neck and the shoulders. Ways to mitigate this would be obviously to reduce the reach. You can do that by putting a shorter stem on there. We could also look at specific handlebars that have a, a shorter reach. Reach being the metric of where the center of the handlebar bore is to where the control is located. This distance can change anywhere between 20, 30, maybe even 40 millimeters. So if you look at a Bontrager VRC handlebar that comes on the track bikes, they're like 100 millimeters in the reach. A Data RHM, which is what we predominantly use for bike fitting, is a 75 millimeter reach. So you're talking a 25 mil reduction in, in the reach to the handlebars just by changing the handlebar. You can also change the setback, but there are other problems associated with that as we're going to discuss next. When I say setback, I'm talking about the horizontal placement of the saddle in space. I find myself reducing setback quite a lot these days because of, for a number of reasons, but something to be aware of is that when you influence, when you alter setback, it influences weight distribution. So if you put your saddle really, really far forward, what you're going to do is throw all of your weight into the front of the bike. Q neck and shoulder issues. It's important to not reduce saddle setback as a means of reducing the reach. It should be done based on rider morphology. Typically riders with shorter torsos and longer legs will need less setback. Individuals with larger heads, um, well endowed ladies will also need less saddle setback to offset additional weight. Speaking of saddles, a very, another very common problem for neck and shoulder issues as well as hand issues is excessive saddle pitch. We have the idiots of British Cycling to thank for this. You should never drop the nose of the saddle as a means of relieving saddle problems. Because essentially what happens when you apply a lot of saddle pitch is you create a slope. What happens when we put something on a slope? We're talking about the ever-present force that is gravity. Try and get the saddle more or less level. If that causes you saddle problems, have a go at maybe lowering it or maybe trying a different saddle. Saddle choice can also have a marked impact on your neck and shoulders. If it's not providing you with enough support or its, uh, its width doesn't allow you to engage with it correctly, sorry specialized, but this is a particularly problematic saddle, what tends to happen is because it's so wide, it's human nature to get away from that because the, the, usually the, the wings of the saddle clip the rider's thighs as they're pedaling. So this saddle is very, strongly correlated with uh, a gravitation to the nose purely simply because of the width of it. This is a specialized power in 168 millimeter width. It's like a ping pong paddle. I mean, you imagine sitting on that and then riding a bicycle. Well, the reality is people don't sit on this. They sit right here, which is the narrowest, least supportive part of the saddle. Cue neck and shoulder issues because you're not being supported and stabilized by the saddle. So you, you, you look for that elsewhere. 
Another thing to consider might be your spinal posture. So riders who have possess a thoracic kyphosis are typically predisposed to neck and shoulder issues. Of oh, what? Thoracic kyphosis is a curvature of, uh, of the upper back here. Because you have uh, more flexion in, in, in this region, it commonly results in uh, a need for excessive extension of the neck. And that usually almost always results in, uh, in neck and shoulder issues. So, so individuals who sit at desks are very commonly predisposed to thoracic kyphosis. It is, it, there is a genetic element to it as well, but it's predominantly driven by an, envi by an environment, sitting at a desk for all, all day, for instance. Uh, and it usually refers to this kind of um, hunchback, essentially. Ways to mitigate it, riders with this physiological trait will almost always need less handlebar drop, so you bring the handlebars up, usually a little bit closer to you as well. And what that does is it allows you, your, your neck to, your shoulders to drop and your, your neck to be a little bit more relaxed. So, kyphotic individuals, go for endurance bikes for shorter reaches and taller stacks. That marks the end of today's episode of Bike Fit Tuesdays. I hope you enjoyed it. Any questions, please put them in the comment section down below. And if you want to book a fit with James, I'll put a link to his shop in the description down below as well. Thank you for watching. See you guys soon.